Good morning, class. Now, today, what we are going to actually talk about is the literature review and the research problem that we have. But we are going to talk, we are going to discuss the second part of it today. We have already done it. Now, when we actually talk of uh, today's uh, session is basically on the problem identification and the problem statement. Now, when we uh, let's start this with a very famous uh, saying from Steve Jobs, who had to say that if you define the problem correctly, you almost have the solution. So the main thing is like you need to state the problem, whatever is your problem, if that has been stated correctly, you, you can define your problem. So the solution lies there itself. So what is a problem or opportunity in a project? Any problem or opportunity, right? It's, it's a topic that uh, you would like to address, do some investigation, study, or create, either descriptively or with the help of experiments, exp experimentally, and design ways of how to resolve it. So it's an opportunity for improvement, invention, and discoveries. It's basically when we talk of problem, it is basically we're talking of the gap which is there between the current situation and the desired level, level or desired goal where you want to reach. Why do a problem uh, occur? It results from that the recognition of the present imperfect situation. You know that your present situation is not correct, but parallelly you also have that belief that you can overcome this and come up with the better future, better future in the sense where you can achieve that desired target. So that's when it happens at camp. So these are some of the tools for identification, problem identification that you have. We will be discussing this in the third part of this uh, unit, SWOT, Steeples, uh, Pestle, CATWO, ABCD, Business Process and Modeling, Porter's Five Forces, Most Analysis, Wise, five wise that we have, fishbone and financial analysis. So these are some of the tools that we have, and we'll go into more details. We also have something called scamper, brainstorming, and SWOT. Scamper, S, C, S stands for substitute. So replacing a thing, concept, with something else. C stands for combine. Combine means when you unite. What, who, ideas, materials, what are you doing? when you're uh, combining everything. Adapt, adapt is to adjust to a new purpose, reshape or tune up. M stands for modify, magnify, minify. So you change the color, sound, and so on and so forth. Size, make it bigger, larger, smaller. P stands for put into another use. That is change when, where, location, you're changing it. E stands for eliminate, that is omit, get rid of, or just uh, removing things. R stands for rearrange or reverse, that is changing the order, sequence, and so on and so forth, redistribute. So the problem or opportunity identification process, it, uh, the process, it, it varies. The problem or opportunity process, it, it varies but it depends on the problem solving process that you follow. What is the process that you follow? So these are the different types of process that we have design thinking, lean model, conventional process, creative process, making these seven steps of to problem solving. We've discussed this earlier. We'll discuss it again. But whichever problem solving process that you choose, you know, uh, it all of these uh, so processes follow some common uh, steps. There are some common steps. That is, first is to determine the objective of solving the problem. Second comes up is to gather information and evidence. Third is to determine what is the root cause of the problem. And lastly is when you analyze the problem. And the outcome of all the problem identification steps that is just mentioned will be uh, the following. When you do this, what's the outcome? One is clear definition of the problem. Second is to have a clear objective and goals for carrying out the project. So it's very important to actually define, define the problem statement. That is define what you are actually, what, why, why you are doing that project. That is the problem. What is the problem? 
and which will help you in finding the solution. First, define the problem. Then only you know that you're finding the solution for what. So that's important. So understanding the problem, if you can understand it correctly, it helps in finding the correct solutions. Some of the suggested ways to know more about the problem, uh, as, as we mentioned, the creative solving, creative problem solving. So in creative problem solving, we had discussed this earlier. We'll go again a little more now. First step is mesh finding. So at this stage, it's also known as objective finding phase, where you really need to determine what is the goal of your problem solving process. You will have to determine the purpose, the intent of carrying out your problem solving purpose. Uh, process what is the purpose okay so what's the benefit it helps you in getting a clear idea on why you're doing it which helps you to in, ensure that you focus on the right area right area is important so if you know your goals and objectives it helps you in focusing your efforts where you it, it requires the most attention where there is more that that there's more value and it also helps you to move forward with the, it gives you confidence and you gives you enthusiasm. You can move ahead. When you know, identify the right area, focus on it, you're more confident. Second step is to have, that is called fact finding. So once you know which is the area that you have to focus on, you need to gather as much as information as you can, right? Which will help you to give a clear picture, a complete picture of the situation, entire situation. So it, it ensures that you gather enough data. This, uh, this, this particular phase, it is ensuring that you get enough data to fully understand the problem, right? So considering what you know about the situation and what you need or want to know to get to the heart of the matter, you have to know what is the situation and what you need to know, what you want to know. That once you know this, once you get this, it helps you in coming to the root problem. So collecting data, information, observations, and employing other methods for learning to you use all this to know more about the situation. So what's the benefit here? When you start uh, exploring data, it helps you to locate the key elements in the present scenario. The factors that will help you to understand the situation instead of distracting you from the real goal. It will help you to focus there rather than uh, just uh, distracting you and you start going here and there, you start looking for something else. Third step is problem finding. What happens here, you, go, you dig deeper into the problem, start analyzing the problem to a greater extent to find the root cause or the real problem that you want to focus on. So what happens here is like here, you generate many and uh, different type or unusual ways to frame your problem. You need to have, and then focus on the specific statement that will open open the door for you for, for and invite some creative ideas, okay? Say, basically, instead of actually talking of we can't, that is negative, if you talk of in the, your question is how might we, that's positive, right? So. Frame the problem in a way which would help you to generate creative and valuable solutions. Look into the problem and information that you've gathered from this new perspective, new type of questions that you're framing, which would help you to have a better and a clearer idea on the problem that you want to solve. So, but you should make sure that if you're focusing on the right problem before you actually move ahead to solve it, develop the solution for it. So that's again, I come back to the same quotation from Steve Jobs. If you can identify the problem clearly, correctly, you almost have the solution. This is important. What's the benefit here? Framing, uh, when you frame your uh, problems, it helps you to express your problems or challenges in, in a proper way that will actually motivate you and uh, excite you. It will give you confidence for discovering new ideas, construct new ideas. So. What is problem analysis? It's the it's an investigation of the root cause of an issue. That's uh, that's what uh, problem analysis is. So where you need to assess its impact and set the priority areas. One of the critical creative thinkers' fundamental rights. If you are a creative thinker, what you need to do is uh, 
most questions you have to be very careful most questions have more than one answer so you have to find out which is the right one and most problems have more than one solution so you need to find out which is the right solution in you need to keep this uh, in your mind now what it means like what if you go a little more details of it so there are more than one definition of a problem so you need to have a clear problem statement that has to be there which would help you to actually take the right action in achieving your goal understanding the problem analysis right you need to understand so as a business students uh, you should see problem as an opportunity and try to make the most of it it's an opportunity for improvement so the present situation for example right the present situation what's happening due to the pandemic that we are having a lot of challenges and problems that we are facing and what are these uh, with regards to supplies of essentials a network problem that you face no income for tourism sectors supply of labor forces that's a problem electronic items no entertainment facility gym and much more right so this is the this is the problem and these are the causes for it like these are so that's where you need to analyze it and how to hear the thing come up how what measures can an organization take or an economy take to address this issue so the definition of a problem statement what is a problem statement it's a statement of the current issue or problem that needs some action timely action intervention to improve the situation right it is explaining the barrier that the current problem faces what's the hurdle that the current problem faces like there's a hurdle because it's a uh, the it talks about the present functional process or the product which is not working as per the desired uh, state desired goal that you want to and the current state of affairs present situation just there and your 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 process or the product that is there so it's not matching there's a gap what has to be done so the statement is completely it has to be objective like very much focused focusing only on the facts of the problem and uh, you need to leave out any other subjective opinions that's there so it actually describes the gap between the as i told earlier the current state level of performance and the desired future level of performance what is the present status and what you want to achieve that gap is there that is problem statement so it should include absolute or relative measures of the problem should be able to measure the intensity of the problem either in absolute terms or relative terms to which would help in ascertaining or quantifying the degree of this gap but a problem statement should not include the possible causes or solution so what are the key elements of an effective problem statement one is the gap so you need to identify the gap that is existing time frame location and trend this you need to describe when and where the problem was first observed and what kind of trend it is following impact quantify the gap what the, in terms of cost time quality environment personal so what is it and the importance importance of this problem what is the degree of importance to the uh, problem to the organization or the individual so which helps actually to understand the degree of the urgency the need to solve the problem if it's creating a major impact that means you have to solve this problem early at the first if it is uh, not to ex uh, ex if it is not creating an impact to that extent then this can be addressed later on also okay so significance of writing a problem statement describe and explain the problem that's the first thing so the main purpose of problem statement is to identify and explain the problem which includes what uh, you need to describe the present environment where the problem occurred what impacts it has on its users finances ancillary activities ancillary means supportive activities it should be also uh, able to explain what the expected environment looks like future 
defining the desired condition it provides an overall vision for the process or the product then you define it it gives you an overall vision it helps in having a clear idea the purpose for initiating the improvement project and the goals that it wants to accomplish you get a complete idea of what you want to do where you want to go why you are doing it and what you want to achieve next comes up is means of communication this is another important function right so what happens here when you are talking of problem statement it helps in obtaining buy in from everyone who's involved in the project buy in means putting everyone on the same page everyone knows what is it so before the project begins the state all the stakeholders have to verify the problem we should and the goals should be accurately described in the problem statement and once this is approved then once this has been approved then only the project team can start reviewing to ensure that everyone understands the issue and what they are trying to accomplish so everyone should be at the same page which will help in defining this helps in defining the scope of the project it also keeps the project project team entirely concentrated on the project on the goal everyone is focused and you know what it is and you are also on the same page guides the project so project project statement is referred throughout the entire project every time why to ensure that uh, the entire team is focused focused on the problem statement and they know what they have to do and they can verify and you can actually verify that they are staying on track it helps it's a guiding factor and at that when the project gets over it's always necessary to revisit to that problem statement to confirm whether the problem has been solved or not whether the right solution has been uh, designed and you need to uh, implement the solution to see that it really solves the problem a pro well, if a problem statement well defined problem statement also helps in performing uh, the root cause analysis it helps you to find out the main main causes of the problem why the problem has occurred and also helps in coming up with the right measures which can be implemented and would prevent this similar problem similar situations to come up in the future so how do you write a problem statement so it's very important that the problem statement uh, should not define the solution as i told earlier or the methods of reaching the solution it should basically the idea is to it should recognize the gap between the present the problem the present situation and the goal what the goal states what's the future so what it can be said that a problem well stated is half solved that's again we are coming to that same statement well stated problem statement helps you in solving the problem half of your problem is solved but there can be many times there can be multiple different types of solution to the problem so only when you after you have a proper problem statement can you actually think of come up with then you can actually have a brainstorm and you come up with multiple solutions that is there so you need to discuss which is the best and then choose the course of action which one to go in for so there there are different ways in which we can write a problem statement so the first is framework one which says you first describe how things are done should work then explain the problem and state why it matters to the organization followed by we need to explain the problem's financial cause that is there which all these things has to be backed up with evidence then comes up where you propose a solution and uh, say but you have can just cannot propose you have to explain why it's you are going for this how it will benefit the organization and finally conclude by summarizing the problem and solution the final uh, summary that this was a problem and this is how we came about with this the second framework that we have is where we talk of it's the 5 w to h 5 w is what when where why who 2 h is how how much matter what is what is a problem that needs to be solved why is why is it a problem highlight the uh, what is the pain that you undergo and where where is the problem observed that is location products who is impacted that's where we talk of the stakeholders to be customers business or department 
when when was the problem first observed how how is the problem observed that is symptoms and how much that is degree of uh, the intensity we are talking of how often is the problem observed that is we talk of the error rate the magnitude or the trend third framework is is uh, the first step where is ideal ideal is the desired state that you want to achieve it in case of your process or product right it identifies the goals of the stakeholders customers as well as it helps in uh, it helps in assisting in defining the scope right so it also talks about the expected environment uh, what it would look like once the solution is implemented that is ideal situation reality talks of the present state present state of the process or product right it is basically the concerns that is expressed by the stakeholders by the customers about the problem it also includes the insights and expertise of the project team and the subject matter experts provided during the problem analysis so what is it what happened why is it bothering that's a real scenario followed by consequences this is where we talk of the impacts of the business impacts on the business if this problem is not fixed or improved upon what would happen and this this includes cost cost could be both monetary as well as non monetary so monetary is where we talk of money non monetary is time productivity competitive advantage and so the magnitude of these effects also helps in determining the priority of the project how important is this the next comes up is proposal and here where we talk of the solutions what could be the potential solutions so once you know what uh, is your what you want to achieve what is the situation if you don't solve that what is the problem then what happens is once everyone agrees on it everyone is on the clear uh, clear has a complete idea they understand then the project team starts uh, coming up with uh, multiple solutions options for sol uh, solving the problem so they could also it could um, they could take uh, suggestions from the stakeholders customers go for further discussion research before a particular course of action is determined from all these options so what is the project objectives in a project management these are specific tangible outcomes that will be produced and delivered by the project specific outcomes that you have this is basically where you identify and describe the uh, the proper the concrete actions that will or the uh, the steps that you will take to achieve the broader goals of the project overall goals what specific uh, things that you want to achieve what are the things say for instance here i have an example so if you go to a company and you are doing your project you see the company is not going well why there are a lot of problems the you do not have they do not have the right kind of human resources finances are problem technology is not working so there is internal chaos happening these are things but and you find out what is it the main cause is because it's uh, the lack of proper leadership from the executives they have created all these problems so what is the main purpose or what is the main objective of the organization as a whole to ensure that they can move up and uh, they uh, they they are doing not currently they are not doing so well so how can they overcome their problems the main thing is to uh, bring about stability in their organization so that they can grow right that's the ultimate thing for that that's the overall goal but for that what has to be solved solving of the all the problems the uh, human resource problem the technology problem finance problem internal disturbance problem as well as you talk of the executives uh, the leadership problem all this needs to be solved to achieve the overall goal that is the growth and stability of the organization and what happens is to be effective objective should motivate the project team it should help in determining the path that they should take to achieve success and it also helps in monitoring the progress of the project so what is the significance of a project objective these are guidelines when making decisions throughout the life span of the project they help in communicating the project purpose in clear tangible words clearly which can be achievable the main reason why effective project objectives are important is like the more clear you are with your objectives it's uh, there's a the more likely that you're going to achieve it and you're very clear so 
Also, projects will be that it will be easy for managing a project very far, easily if you have a clear objectives, effective objectives. Objectives also help to restructure the project and also to it helps in validating the success of the project. So more effective the objectives, more successful is the project, right? They help project managers to measure the targets that they have to achieve and also makes the entire project team to understand what is expected from each of them only when you have a clear objective and uh, a well-written objective is crucial why because it helps it it can affect and it helps also it affects every step of the project life cycle what has to be done thus uh, when you have a specific objective it gives a team the project team a greater chance of achieving the objective why because they know exactly precisely that what they are working what they are working to achieve what is their goal what do they have to achieve it also supports the current emphasis on total quality management total quality management is whereby every member of the team has to consider themselves responsible they have to take responsibility for the quality because it's the whole team can see the desired outcome from the beginning to uh, uh, of the project from the outcome from the beginning of the project entire team can is responsible entire team works and entire team is seeing it if they are everyone is uh, uh, concerned about the quality everyone knows how it's going to affect so it's total quality okay so what are the features of a project objectives objectives are statements they are not questions they are numbered in a list they can be multiple objectives they are the successive steps that one has to take to achieve or complete the task at hand they are objectives are statements of what one has to do what intent or one should be doing uh, project objective should be smart that is specific measurable attainable retainable and time bound it's one of the key element of the project proposal or the project charter so how to write project objectives there are there are two ways first framework is called smart uh, where s stands for specific you describe the objective by answering questions what why when who where to actually so that none of the stakeholders are in doubt what the goal is m stands for measurable so an objective should have some metric should have some specific values that should be used to monitor and access the success a stands for achievable achievable is the goals that you're stating that should be you should be able to achieve it right that otherwise it demotivates the entire team relevant relevant in the sense objective should forego should uh, actually be such which should fit with the focus where you want to at what where you want to concentrate on it should be able to you should be able to make a long-term plan for your organization or team so that that is important so that every objective is achieved in a is achieved is a step towards the overall project or business goals each objective that you achieve it helps you in overcome achieving the overall business goals of the organization time limited the aim, it's what happens every project right should should have a definite time frame so this is an exam see these examples of a smart second framework that we have is objective key results or the okr okr it uh, was first used by intel and today they are used by other technology giants like google linkedin oracle so what happens first step is objectives where you have to highlight three to five objectives of your team or organization like this should be ambitious but yet should be achievable and within a time frame then comes up is key results in this step is where you need to highlight three results under each of these objectives you need to highlight three results which will define your success and this should be you should be able to quantify them and it's difficult yes it should be something it's not so easy but difficult but 
it should have the limits of what you believe can be that you can achieve there has to it is quantified there should be some degree of difficulty and also some limits like what you can actually achieve what you cannot so at the end of that set of the entire time span if you you should be measuring how successful you were at achieving each of the key key results from using a scale of 0 to 1 and what has been said found out that the success rate on an average is 60 to 70% so problem and opportunity statement which is relevant for your project when you're doing it what what are the things it, it talks about problem which currently exists on an area of opportunity and area of attention in an organization it is of a high interest to the organization it is significant to the organization able to achieve some uh, set of a uh, preset of the object goals suggest some practical solutions project objective must be related to the problem or opportunity that is identified so these are some of the examples of good project objectives if you read it you'll find it this is the link and the video that you have if you click on it you'll find that it talks more of what a project objective is and why is it important to have one right so that's all that we have from here okay so we see you in the next class